If you watched my first video on airline stocks and acted on it, you doubled your money. Well, did you? Clearly, today we're in a bit of a different world. Uh, airline stocks did double, although they've given some of it back recently. But the world's really emerging from the pandemic. Uh, traffic's picking up, a large amount of countries are reopening. And so the question truly is now, are airline stocks still a good investment? The answer to my question is absolutely yes. Airline stocks still make a lot of sense. You just have to pick the right ones and obviously the right time to buy them. But today I want to walk you through six of my favorite names. Uh, three household names. We'll talk about United, Delta and Alaska. And three of my favorite picks because they either have really amazing financials or they play in a niche market that's really specific to them. And that's Allegiant, Hawaiian and SkyWest. And before we get in the details on the airlines and the numbers and figures and why they still make sense uh, to be an investable theme, uh, I want to show you this TSA website that is a, a great resource. If you don't know this website, uh, TSA shows you the daily traffic uh, that's passing through TSA, so the daily travelers in the United States versus what happened last year in the middle of the pandemic and versus 2019, which obviously serves as a great benchmark. And you see we are still somewhere around 30 to 40 percent uh, below 2019 levels but clearly the traffic is really picking up from you know january february when the reopening in the united states started to uh you know i'm filming this in the middle of may uh where we are at 1.7 million uh, daily travelers so this is a great resource for anybody that's investing in the airline stocks all right six airlines to get through uh just for the heck of it let's alternate between one of the majors and one of the smaller airlines so let's start with united it seems like a like a good place to start United Airlines uh, was the second major airline uh, after Delta to report uh, a positive cash flow generation for the month of March. So the last quarter results, the first quarter of 2021, when they reported, uh, they really March was really a big inflection point for them. From you know a weak demand in January, February to March, where traffic really started picking up and uh, they started finally generating positive cash flow. They ended the quarter with $21 billion in liquidity. So the worries we had about US airlines uh, a year ago in terms of are they going to make it? Are they going to survive? That's really no longer the case. They have a ton of cash, uh, United $21 billion, uh, a lot of debt at the same time, but, but they have a ton of liquidity. Now, United has the largest international network, so they will really benefit from uh, a more meaningful reopening when it comes to international travel. And they obviously will benefit also from when business travelers return, right? Hopefully after the summer when people finally return to the offices and people will suddenly say, I have to go see my customers. But uh, those two items are really what um, uh, what's the most important thing for United. Uh, and you see with you know proof of vaccinations, uh, more and more countries are reopening. So you have uh, Croatia, Greece, Iceland, uh, other European countries where United's quickly adding flights and capacity and already uh, benefiting from this reopening there. Now, when it comes to uh, a deleveraging plan, right? How to get rid of all this debt. So United doesn't really have a full-fledged plan just yet, uh, but they already committed to $2 billion in structural uh, cuts when it comes to expenses. And uh, among those is, for example, uh, a $300 million reduction in management and admin positions or reducing the headquarters space in Chicago at their uh, headquarters or simply more productivity and technology um, uh, enhancing projects. Um, now, when it comes to the stock, right? So United trades at $55 uh, at the time of filming. When you look at this uh, Bloomberg page here, I wanna show you uh, the analyst community on Wall Street, right? All the research houses that put a target and a buy, sell, or hold rating on a stock. United is a bit of a mix versus all the others I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna talk about because all the others really are mostly buys. United is, is slightly mixed, but when you look at the targets, um, you know, on the buys, we are somewhere around $65 to $70, which is a 30% upside to current pricing. But I want to show you this other chart here. This is a five-year chart um, uh, of the United Airlines stock. And you see in 2018 and 19, uh, the stock was at just below $100. We were trading at $95. And that's a 70% upside to current levels. So I'm showing you this simply to underline the fact that once there's a more meaningful reopening uh, internationally, United is really uh, very correlated um, to you know, a post-pandemic world where they will really benefit uh, more than the others because of this uh, huge international network that they have. So again, United, I think a great stock if you believe that um, six months from now, nine months from now, we are mostly uh, out of the pandemic here.
The second airline I want to talk about is Allegiant, ticker ALGT. Now, this is a smaller airline, but but has a huge amount of potential. Uh, so just like all the other ones with uh, traffic picking up in the US, they are really ramping up the volume. And in fact, Allegiant is the first airline to restore their flying levels to pre-pandemic levels in 2019. So at the last uh, results for uh, the first quarter 2021, they indicated that they will fly over the next few months, they will fly at the same or higher levels than they, f than they flew in 2019. And they will grow at 10% for the next two years. Now, when it comes to liquidity, uh, again, uh, a smaller airline than United, obviously, uh, they will have about a billion dollars in liquidity by the end of June, so by the end of the second quarter, which is, uh, listen to this, this is twice as much as what they had at the end of 2019. So they have twice as much of liquidity than what they had um, a year and a half ago, just before the pandemic started. Uh, so they completely restored the balance sheets to pre-pandemic levels. And in fact, if you look at 2020, uh, they generated 235 million of operating cash versus a negative uh, 8 billion for the industry as a whole. So I don't know how they do this, but uh, Allegiant's really doing something right here. Uh, they uh, announced 15 new routes um, over the next few months. Uh, they will have about 105 planes by summer 2021. So this is an airline that's growing and that's actually making a, a real amount of money. Now, when it comes to the stock, right, the stock is trading at about $229 to $30. And when you look at the analyst community, again, this page uh, on Bloomberg that shows um, the, all the research houses, you see there's 11 names. Nine have a buy rating and two have a have a hold or um, a kind of perform rating. Nobody has a sell recommendation. And the targets are very close to 300. We're at 285, 290, 295, uh, 300. So this is also, you know, despite the run up that we have seen in the stock price recently over the last few months with the vaccines showing up, uh, this is still a 30% upside for an airline that's really powering through um, the pandemic and the reopening is in full swing. Obviously, they mostly fly domestic United States, right? So that's also helping because they don't have the same exposure that United has to international that really still has to kind of uh, come back. The third airline I want to talk about is Delta. And Delta has a reputation for doing things differently, better than all their competitors. So let's go through the headlines here. Uh, March, again, a huge turning point for Delta Airlines. Uh, they were the first ones to report positive cash generation. So the first time they're actually making money in the month of March, uh, which was the first time since the pandemic started. Uh, they expect to be breaking even by end of the second quarter and being profitable in Q3 of 2021. They have a couple of levers to play on, right? So one is the removal of the middle seat block. That uh, Remember, the Delta was the only airline to keep that block uh, until uh, the month of May. So they were really not filling up any middle seats on their planes uh, until the month of May. So this is going to be a huge boost uh, to their earnings and margins in the second quarter because suddenly they're filling up a third of the plane that they were not filling up previously. Then second uh, is uh, the return of the business travelers, right? In, in the third quarter, we can argue how many business travelers will return, but this is about to happen as people go back to the offices. Now, in terms of liquidity, Delta has $16.6 billion in liquidity as of the end of the first quarter. So again, a ton of cash. They uh, announced that they expect to start paying in cash for new aircraft delivery. So this is really going to help with their debt burden and the interest burden that they have uh, in place. And in fact, they already started chipping away at, um, at some of these burdens. So first of all, their daily cash burn in the first quarter was $11 million a day. So they were throwing out $11 million a day just to just to keep uh, the company running uh, in the first quarter. But that's a lot better than the $24 million per day that they were uh, spending in the third quarter of last year uh, in the middle of the pandemic, right? 24 down to 11. So huge efficiency gains there. But also they started chipping away at, at the, the, the whole expenditures they have on the debt side, right? They typically spend about $4 million a day in terms of uh, interest. And they already started uh, filling up these gaps, uh, deleveraging the balance sheet. Uh, their pension plan is going to be fully funded by the end of the year. So this is there's a lot of improvement there. And finally, they did a lot of work on um, uh, the fleet simplification and renewal. So they achieved a lot of uh, efficiencies. The, the fuel efficiencies in the first quarter were about 12%. So they're flying at, you know, spending 12% less on fuel in the first quarter versus the previous. Um, and they also simplify their fleet, right? They retired a lot of the older aircraft, simplify uh, how many uh, airplane types they will have. And that's also obviously generating a structural cost savings going forward. 
So now when it comes to the stock, again, Delta has run up a lot. I remember Delta in the middle of the pandemic was trading at 25. Now it's at 46. Uh, we have seen it above 50. Uh, when you look again at this Bloomberg page here, you see the analyst community is a bit mixed between uh, holding the stock versus buying the stock 10, uh, 10 to 10. But when you look at the targets, we are around 55 to 60, 65 dollars. So again, that's a 30 percent upside for Delta still. So again, Delta does things a little bit differently. It's a very solid balance sheet. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about American Airlines, for example, in this video for a reason, because their balance sheet is really horrible versus uh, what you see uh, at Delta or some of the other airlines like Allegiant that I just mentioned. Uh, so Delta definitely still on the list uh, with a ton of upside. The next airline I want to talk about is Hawaiian Airlines. And uh, Hawaiian is close to my heart. I used to live in Hawaii for many years and, and traveled on Hawaiian. but. When it comes to the highlights and the financial results over the last uh, several months, right? So let's talk about it. They reported um, a, a loss for the first quarter in 2021, but the loss was a lot smaller than the market expected. They finished the quarter with $1.9 billion in liquidity. So again, they, uh, they took on debt, but they obviously have a lot of liquidity now. So the focus really shifted from surviving the pandemic to becoming profitable in 2021 again. When you look at the cash burn over the last quarter, so the first quarter of uh, the year, uh, they were burning through a million dollars per day versus 1.7 million dollars in the previous quarter uh, at the end of 2020. So again, a lot of structural improvements there. But now let's talk about uh, the bookings and what's really happening with travel to Hawaii, right? So Hawaii, uh, Hawaiian Islands really opened up in October 2020. And when you look at the latest bookings, the North American bookings to Hawaii run at 110% of 2019 levels. So really mainland travel to Hawaii is happening and that's despite a very strict testing regime. What is not happening is the inter-island travel and the international travel. Inter-island is going to be improving shortly because until um, I think a week or two ago, uh, the, uh, the airline and the state required uh, testing for COVID between the islands. So that was really cumbersome for people to travel because every time you would go uh, to uh, the neighboring island, you would have to get a test. Now that's falling away, that's going away with uh, for people that are vaccinated. So you don't need uh, that test anymore. And when you look at the international travel, uh, they are running at about 12% of 2019 levels. So it's really the international travel um, that is, um, you know, very depressed. Uh, they have a lot of international travel to Asia. Obviously, they're in the middle of the Pacific, right? So again, this is a this is the biggest upside for Hawaiian when this whole pent up demand again with countries reopening and Asian countries uh, connecting again uh, back to the U.S. with some kind of a vaccine passport. Hawaii is again going to be, and Hawaiian Airlines will be uh, a huge beneficiary of that. And finally, I want to say uh, Hawaiian uh, trades on really pretty depressed levels when it comes to historical ranges on the EBITDA measures. Uh, the stock now is about $24, $25. So when you look at the analyst community, again, this page here on Bloomberg, you kind of see that uh, uh, those that have a buy rating look at about 30, 30 plus uh, dollars uh, on the stock. So that's again, 20, 25% upside for Hawaiian. So again, if you see another hiccup in the in the airlines uh, stocks, I think Hawaiian is definitely a stock you want to pick if you can get it in the low 20s or even if, if it shows up again below uh, 20. Uh, it's, it's an amazing company to own because they play in this niche market. And they have, uh, again, just like all the other ones, achieved a ton of efficiencies over the over the last year. Alaska Airlines. Alaska really stands out for the balance sheet because their balance sheet is just outstanding uh, compared to all the other airlines. So again, just like for the other ones, March was a big turning point for Alaska, generating positive cash flow. When you look at the load factor in uh, March, uh, they were at 62% versus uh, mid 40s in January, February. So this is really where the demand started picking up for them. But in terms of liquidity, Alaska really stands out here. They have $5.3 billion in cash as of the end of the first quarter with only $1.6 billion uh, in debt. So $5.3 billion in cash uh, in terms of liquidity versus $1.6 billion in debt. I'm saying this twice because when you talk to airline analysts, Alaska is always you know, right up there because of how great their balance sheet is. They're expecting to be break even also in uh, the second quarter, so by the end of June, and uh, profitable again by the third quarter of 2021. But also what stands there is the is the change in kind of fleet strategy that they have. They are moving also for, away from leasing to more owning and uh, also to achieving a lot more efficiencies. They are replacing a lot of the Airbus, uh, the older ones, uh, A319 and 320 with the Boeing Max uh, that obviously was recertified by the FAA and that remember that is uh, about a 25% uh, in terms of fuel efficiency gains. 
So again, we'll see this translated in the following quarters uh, when Alaska reports again in the second and third quarter as this whole strategy uh, moves there. In terms of stock prices and, and buying the stock, right? Alaska has done really well. Uh, when you look at the stock performance of the last few months, we're trading at about $70. But when you look again at this uh, Bloomberg page, the analyst community, uh, you know, uh, mostly buy ratings there, uh, a few holds, but nobody has a sell recommendation. And again, the target is about um, uh, $85, $90, with JP Morgan even putting it on at $104. Uh, so when you kind of look at the average, of, of, the, of those targets on the buy recommendations. Uh, again, that's about 30% upside still for Alaska Airlines. The last airline I wanna talk about is SkyWest, ticker SKYW. Now, I talk about SkyWest. SkyWest is very close to my heart because I have a lot of friends flying for SkyWest. And this is not a household name. If you're not an airline analyst or not interested in the airline business per se, you don't know SkyWest, but you've all flown on SkyWest. If you've flown in the United States, you have likely flown on a SkyWest plane because SkyWest flies for all the major uh, carriers. They fly for American, Delta, United and Alaska under their brands. Uh, they fly these smaller jets uh, up to 76 seats. Uh, they fly the CR, the Canadian Bombardier CRJs and the Brazilian Embraer jets. But again, it's painted as a Delta or United or American, but it's really SkyWest flying you. Now, the interesting thing about SkyWest is that during the whole pandemic, uh, they were actually flying at 60, 65 percent of capacity because a lot of the majors shifted their routes to these smaller jets. They gave them a lot of business, uh, even though they were, you know, United or Delta may have been flying at 20, 25 percent capacity or even less, uh, you know, in, in the worst moments of the pandemic, SkyWest was actually flying. Um, they, again, focus when it comes to the financials, they have really good liquidity. They took some money from the government in the CARES Act, just like all the other airlines. Uh, they have almost a billion dollars in liquidity. Uh, they'll be profitable again uh, by the second half of this year. But what SkyWest also did that, that is not widely reported, they, they bought, uh, they spent a lot of money on maintenance and bought a lot of parts uh, in reserves and they kind of hid a lot of these expenses and front-loaded them in the in the bad pandemic quarters and they will reap benefits of that in the quarters to come. So again, SkyWest is a fantastic airline. Uh, they have about 450 planes. Uh, they're actually a, a really big airline when you think about Allegiant has about 105 planes versus SkyWest about 450. Uh, but people just don't know it, don't focus on the airline too much. Uh, SkyWest trades at about um, $49.50 right now. When you look at the analyst community again, when you look at this Bloomberg page, um, you know, mostly buy outperform ratings uh, with about 60, 65 dollars uh, per share in terms of target. So again, that's a 30 percent upside. So I talk a lot about SkyWest. You could get me going, obviously. You know, I'm a pilot. Um, uh, I'm commercially rated as well. I have a lot of friends in the community. I could talk about this forever. Um, and this video is obviously a lot, uh, a lot longer than I try to usually make them, but simply because I'm so excited about this industry. All right. So much for the uh, airline talk today. Uh, hopefully. Uh, you enjoyed this conversation. I certainly love talking about the subject. Uh, please give a like to the video if you enjoyed it. That's going to help the uh, uh, the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this this type of content and ideas on on uh, the markets. And um, I'll see you in a few days.